Today on Engineering Newswire, we're taking aim with a next generation smart gun, moving forward to Musk's Hyperloop, and revealing the secrets of master sword makers. So why do I have a hammer? Since 2009, the Canadian Armed Forces, or CAF, have been patiently waiting for their new and improved smart gun. Well, last week, Defence Research and Development Canada, DRDC, and Colt Canada unveiled the new prototype. And there it is. Through the design process, the team paid special attention to the gun's weight and ergonomics. In fact, DRDC and CAF personnel were able to gain experience while deployed in Afghanistan, which helped develop the current prototype. The main weapon contains a NATO standard bullpup style, with the magazine behind rather than in front of the trigger mechanism, 5.56mm NATO standard caliber, semi-automatic rifle with selectable fire rate. The secondary weapon, because one is clearly not enough, includes a 12 gauge 18 millimeter shotgun and a 40 millimeter three round capacity grenade launcher. To make these guns smart though, the devices are integrated with electronics that provide the soldiers with the ability to transmit and receive data to and from a command and control network. A NATO standard power and data bus also allow the soldiers to attach various smart accessories such as electro-optical sights and position sensors. While no date has been set for the gun's release to the armed forces, apparently the next step will be to incorporate tracking point style projectile guidance technology that would allow the gun to automatically find and engage targets. And at which point the smart gun makes the physical soldier an unnecessary part of battle. It's real. It's coming. About three years ago, Elon Musk began toying with the idea of a Hyperloop as a future replacement for bullet trains. It would essentially be a cross between a Concorde, a Railgun, and a bullet train, and would be able to travel at around 760 miles per hour. However, after releasing a 57-page white paper detailing the concept in August of 2013, it seemed Musk had turned his focus back to rockets and cars. But a couple startups began where he left off. One startup, Hyperloop Technologies, has already raised 8.5 million, with a projected 80 million that will probably be raised later this year. Another by a slightly different name, Hyperloop Transportation Technologies, or HTT, was formed in 2013 and now has a team of 170 engineers and designers. They've also created a 76-page document detailing their own plans for the Hyperloop, including optimal routes, station types, capsule aerodynamics, seating arrangements, propulsion, etc. However, the startup now needs to focus on lining up investors because it's likely going to be expensive as each mile of track will cost roughly $45.3 million. Although these two startups are working out the kinks on paper, Musk will most likely be doing the physical construction. I mean, not himself per se, but last month he vowed to build a test track in Texas for groups to work on Hyperloop prototypes. So although it's still a long way off, it appears Musk has not given up on his vision. Researchers have revealed the skilled craftsmanship used to produce pure, strong steel for a 200-year-old, 75-centimeter-long sham shear, a curved, single-edged Indian battle sword. Using metallography to test the metal's composition and neutron diffraction to non-invasively shed light on the forging process as well as the materials, researchers at the UK-based Science and Technology Facility Council's Isis Pulse Neutron Source used two primary instruments. Inez in Engine X. Inez focuses on material science, archaeometry, and detector tests, while Engine X is more commonly used to test major engineering components like aircraft wings or train wheels. The blade was found to be made of very good quality, high carbon steel with very few impurities. They also found that when it was shaped, the metal was allowed to cool slowly rather than being plunged into water and the methods used to forge the blade were different in the upper and lower parts to make it strong in battle. The steel used was very pure. The high carbon content proves that it was made of wood steel, 
which has a specific band-like pattern that forms when craftsmen allow cast pieces of metal to cool down very slowly, before forging them at low temperatures. You see? Not everything needs to be process automation and lean manufacturing. Sometimes old school remains the best way of doing business. You think Duncan McCloud used cheap steel along his path of immortality? In the end, there can be only one. May it be David Manti, the Dave Lander. Here we are, born to be kids. We're the princes of the universe. Do you have story ideas? Why a hammer again? Yeah, comment below, and we'll cover them in the next episode. For the PD&D channel, I'm David Manti, and this has been your Engineering Newswire. Music. I think we got that one, too. <laughs>